Hello everyone, Silverstruck here. Welcome to the Silverstruck channel. I've been on a quest to collect all eight of the Inglehard Proof Prospector rounds, and I've been able to acquire the fifth one in my collection in the series. This one is the Canadian Prospector, the one and only Canadian Prospector with a mintage of 250. I did acquire this uh, round on eBay, Part of the problem with purchasing an eBay is the pictures don't always uh, represent exactly how the round or coin is going to come out. So I wasn't too happy with this purchase. It cost quite a bit to, to pick this particular round up. Uh, so I'll get more into uh, the condition of this Canadian Prospector in just a moment. I would like to say that uh, this series has been extremely difficult to collect. So having this round here... Uh, I only now need to collect the 1983 Big E Reverse, the 1984, and the infamous, probably non-existent, 1988 Summit Bank round. So, never uh, seen one of those in person so far, so hopefully it exists, and that will round out all eight rounds of this series. So, back to the Canadian Prospector. I picked it up, like I was saying, on eBay, and the pictures... Uh, tell a different story to how this coin actually uh, came to me, and that would be most evident here on the reverse. So let me break this out of the capsule so we can get a uh, better look. So here we have the round out of the capsule, so you can see what I'm talking about with the type of toning uh, that we have in this round. And uh, to me, it's not appealing toning. The way the pictures were shown, I did not expect the round to come in uh, this way. So you can see above uh, or right to the right of the word uh, one in the one troy ounce. You can see what looks like uh, to be a giant fingerprint. It probably isn't, but that's what it looks like right underneath the uh, goose's neck and to the right of the uh, the word one. So that's not uh, that's not too appealing. And this type of toning here, it's not like it's rainbow toning or has some vibrant colors in it. It's, uh, it's just not the type of toning uh, that I want. So I'm going to try something very dangerous here, and I was inspired by my friend Skeptic Contrarian who posted a video, a series of videos, on cleaning with Easy Zest Cleaner and uh, dipping proof uh, rounds and coins in particular. So I'm going to try that. I've never dipped anything ever. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it uh, for numismatic coins, obviously. But this is a vintage round, so I'm pretty sure we can get away with dipping this one. And, uh, and getting this toning out of here. So I could ruin the round, or it might come out great. I don't know what's going to happen. So uh, let's, uh, let's try it out and see what happens. All right, so here we are in one of my bathrooms. I apologize if there's an echo. I've never actually filmed in a, in a bathroom before, uh, but this is the best place I could uh, choose to do this experiment. I've never dipped anything before, so I brought a couple test pieces out. So I'm going to give uh, one or two of these a try. And I'm going to use my uh, handy dandy uh, plastic chopsticks. That's the best thing I have for uh, keeping my hands away from the solution. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take this piece right here. And this one is not that toned up. I'm, I'm trying a light toner. Just kind of going for that, that brown spot right there. So let's check this one out. And we're supposed to dip for uh, 15 seconds. So when it goes, it's fully submerged. It's going to wait for a little bit. Okay. Take it out of the solution. I'm going to lose it. Oh my God. All right. So my first dip was nothing short than a disaster. <laughs> As far as uh, logistically, the uh, the round itself came out beautiful. So what happened was I lost it in the bottom of the easy easy zest because my my plastic chopsticks couldn't hold the weight of the round. Down it went. I fished it out of there, ran it under some water, and uh, voila, we have a round in great condition. Uh, when it fell into the uh, easy zest, a whole bunch of um, liquid came out of it. You can see, I think this ex experiment's going to go quite well because you can already see uh, over there to your right-hand side a little spot. So that gives me some hope that the Easy Zest is going to work out just, just fine. I scoured the house for something I could use other than those chopsticks. And the only thing I came up with was wooden chopsticks. So I'm going to try this again. Um, 
you know, I don't want to go to the garage and get a, a pair of tweezers or something. I don't have anything, uh, you know, that has rubber to it. So hopefully this works. All right, after messing around with the wooden chopsticks, I'm back to the plastic ones, but holding the round in a different way. So let's see if this is going to work out or not. Dipping the round. I'm going to pull this out, hold it under water, and then I'm going to dry it. So I'm really hoping this works. If not, I'm just going to, it's going to destroy a, a proof prospect around, which is not good. Okay. Wow, it looks fantastic. All right. All right. So here we have the finished product, and I have to say I'm very impressed with what Easy Zest was able to do for this round. This is perfect. Uh, the round still has uh, deep mirrored fields and frosty devices, so it's still a uh, proof round. None of the, uh, the Easy Zest didn't take away any of the proofiness, if you will, of this, uh, this piece. So I'm very excited because I did want to collect this series, is, uh, even though I can't use the term blast white, but uh, untoned as I could, uh, just for this uh, series of eight I'm trying to collect. Let's check out the Obverse. And here we have the Obverse. I just waited to show it for a moment to let all the uh, moisture vaporize from me holding this round. So uh, there you have it, the Canadian Prospector. I'm going to send this one out for grading, 250 uh, made. Or minted if you will so uh, very happy to have this one in the collection and have the collection moving forward so you have to let me know in the comment section have you ever dipped anything whether it was a coin round or bar and as always thanks for watching